Hey there, this is Chris Cass, season two, episode 26. My name's Chris Abraham, and I'm out here again, outside. Uh, there are no cicadas, but there are children playing in a fountain here in Penrose Square Park uh, in sexy uh, South Arlington, Virginia, uh, right at the corner of Columbia Pike and uh, Burton Street. He thinks Barton 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 Street and uh, this episode is about how much I'm struggling with my with my diet with my uh, intermittent fasting with my one meal a day and with all that other stuff so I thought I would uh, go into some details about how that's going with me how I'm doing with that and um, um, things I'm going to try, things I have tried, things I've accepted that aren't strict, uh, dirty fasting, uh, embracing things like broth, uh, chicken broth, beef broth, bone broth, chicken bone broth, beef bone broth into my life. So it'll be boring. I will talk about other more fueled political intrigue in the next episode, but this one, I'm just going to brain dump on how challenging this has been in light of the fact that it was pretty easy for me to uh, give up drinking. I just stopped. So this is a little bit more difficult. And I'll also share my rationalizations. I'll be right back to you after this quick uh, commercial break. Oh, thank you. Welcome back. This is Chris Cast. My name's Chris Abraham. This is season two, episode 26. I'm sitting here in Penrose Square Park in sexy South Arlington, right off of Columbia Pike. You can probably hear buses in the background, and you can probably hear kids playing in a fountain. That fountain is the kind of fountain that exists on a flagstone patio kind of area and all the water shoots up from the ground and so that's the closest thing we have to a public pool in the area so lots and lots of kids come in here um, daycare centers bring the kids here babies play and it's you know it's a really good uh, liability risk because it's really difficult for children to drown Although it's really easy for kids to fall over and break their skull open on the flagstone. So I guess it's all about uh, pros and cons lists, right? Um, I will be right back to you after the break. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. My name is Chris Abraham. It's season two, episode 26 of Chris Cast, and I'm going to report to you about how my uh, how my intermittent fasting is going. Well, 
instead of doing just a simple thing that my cardiologist told me to do, which is just do not eat before noon and do not eat after seven, I started doing that and then I'm like, hells yeah, I'm gonna do, uh, uh, I'm gonna do a more extreme where I do 24, 20 hours uh, fasting and four hours eating or an 18, an 18.6 or a, you know, 19, uh, five or a 17, seven or a 16, eight. But then I went so far as to go uh, an advanced twin, uh, OMAD, one meal a day, which would take me to 24 hour, 23 hours and 45 minutes a day with only a 15 minute eating window. And that went great until I started to feel the flu symptoms and the freak out of my body. And then I'm like, well, what I'll do is I'll set my app, which is the Kevin Rose special called the Zero. And I will set that to an advanced 24.75 hours a day. And then I will just be happy when I hit 16 hours or when I hit 18 hours or when I hit 20 hours. And anything uh, above 16 hours will be a win for me. And anything above 24 will be a super win. And every anything that's exactly um, when set for when I am supposed to go back into fasting is going to be a win-win. So that went pretty well for a few days. I lost weight like crazy, uh, but I was being strict. I wasn't including any electrolytes. I wasn't adding any salts. I was just drinking black coffee, tea, or water. And then I exhibited some some. Uh, some secondary effects that were making me grumpy Chris grumpy cat and so people are like you need um, electrolytes or why not try some bone broth and then it snowballed from there I started making all kinds of mistakes I started breaking fast early I started drinking guzzling bone broth and then uh, chicken broth and then chicken stock and aside from the fact that it was all liquid diet I was still being a little piggy instead of doing what fasting is supposed to do which is encouraging your body to resort to uh, to fat and to stored to stored energy instead of re requiring exclusively carbohydrates and uh, and whatever's in your tum tum so that's been a struggle. I've, I've enabled myself by uh, giving myself some, uh, by being kind to myself, I found a, an out. And so I've been taking that out and I need to stop being so accepting as to what I would allow myself to do versus what I need to do to return to the path, uh, to the path of drastically losing weight, which I really need to do for my health, for my longevity, for my sex appeal, for my dateability, for my comfort, and for how I get around in the world. You know, it's not easy on my body to have an extra, I would say an extra 110 pounds by now, 110 pounds. I have a friend who tells me that my goal should be 100 kilos. And 100 kilos is about 220 pounds. And I think that sounds right. I think 100 kilos is what I'm aiming for. And that's what I'm gonna aim at. So I have to reconvene and stop giving myself out, myself outs, and uh, be rigorous and do what I say I'm gonna do. But also realize that uh, I will never lose this weight through exercise alone. Um, the You can't outrun the fork. You can't outrun the glass. You can't outrun the spoon or the knife. 
you need to make sure that you eat like a skinny person. And I'll talk about how skinny people eat in the next segment. Hey there, I'm back. It's season two, episode 26. My name's Chris Abraham, and I'm near, I'm near the, uh, the street, and I'm near a park, and I'm near kids, and I'm near uh, a fountain that is splashy splashy. So I don't know how this is gonna sound, but I'm gonna continue forth. All right, how do normal people eat? How do skinny people eat? How do old skinny people eat? Well, there's a guy named either Nicholas or Nathan, who is at the cafe every morning. And he's got a little bit of a pot belly, but he just turned 70. And I would say he's pretty fit. He's not like, you know, like Dan Kruger's dad fit, but he's, you know, he's a healthy fit guy of a certain age, just turned 70 a few days ago. And he forgets to eat all the time. I One thing that I know about skinny people, especially into their 40s and 50s and 60s and 70s and 80s, is that they are, their natural state is intermittent fasting. They don't have a name for it. They don't track it on Zone. They don't track it on My, my uh, Fitness Pal. They don't track it on, um, on uh, Fitbit. They just do it, which is they wake up Maybe they eat at 10 o'clock in the morning, then they forget to eat until maybe four or five o'clock, maybe six or seven o'clock that night. Uh, if they eat for lunch, they just have a sandwich or a half a, sa- a half, half um, uh, grilled cheese sandwich in a bowl of tomato soup or one tuna fish sandwich or a bowl of soup a bowl of soup or they will forget to eat for a couple days and then have a splitting headache which will remind them that they have to eat another thing they love to do is they love to guzzle drinks and a lot of skinny people are never anywhere without a some sort of iced tea not sugar iced tea but some sort of steeped tea iced or hot drink um I don't know how the Brits do it because they put sugar in, in, and uh, milk in all their drinks. But I know that all the skinny people that I know uh, sip tea all day long. Uh, the skinny people that I know always have a Nalgene bottle with them. Uh, they always guzzle water, at least water, tea, um, that sort of thing. Another thing that skinny people do is they do a lot of walking, they do a lot of moving, uh, they find all of their happy time uh, in, in, in a, some sort of movement. Uh, they take the stairs, they, they, uh, they're always being fastidious at home, they're always doing something physical. But that's not always true. That, 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 I know a lot of very thin and slender people who, uh, whenever they have downtime, they just uh, relax like, like sleepy cats and, and read novels. But they don't read novels with a, uh, a, bag, of, uh, a bag of chips next to them. They, they lie back with things like radishes and celery and things like that. So you just have to find your slenderest, oldest friend and you need to shadow them. I know that corporations have these things called shadowings where when you're new at a company or when you're trying to get ready for a new company, I know that even my spooky friend out in, uh, in the Middle East, he's transitioning back home and I know that for two weeks he's having his replacement shadow him. So. Shadowing is a thing, and I think you need to find the healthiest, slenderest, most healthy-looking person in their 50s, 60s, and 70s, and you need to shadow them. 
You need to emulate their diet. It'll probably be something crazy like a, a cup of coffee and um, toast with butter, which is to say one slice of toast, butter, and jam in the morning and uh, a tuna sandwich at lunch and then whatever the family's having at night, maybe chicken, rice, and broccoli. And they might even have uh, an evening ice cream, but that ice cream would be just a couple large spoons in a bowl. It wouldn't be the whole pint. Now think about what you eat over the course of the day. It really shouldn't be more than, depending on your activity level, it, your skinny friends probably eat between 900 and 1200 calories a day if they're sedentary. Um, if they're active, they're probably eating 1500 to 2500 calories a day. And if they're also slender, but super, they're an athlete, they're probably eating between 3000 and 5000 calories a day. But the, the, pretty, the pretty librarian who doesn't have a daily jog or go to the gym, uh, he or she is probably only taking in a thousand to fifteen hundred calories a day and they've done it like that for their entire life um, so that's much different than when I let my calories get away from me it, it can be two thousand three thousand four thousand five thousand calories depending on how much I slip or how much I binge uh, as I've said before I I willfully to remain 250 pounds with the amount of activity that I do, which is I try to be as active as possible, but I'm no, I'm no active God, but you know, you've seen my social media. Um, yeah, I should only be doing 1250 calories a day to do the kind of reduction that I want. And uh, that's every day. That's every day. Uh, there might be need to there might need to be some days that I don't do that because I need to make sure that my body realizes that it's certainly not in starvation mode, um, and I need to make sure that I um, supplement that with uh, with electrolytes, and I am al I am allowed to have some, let's say some pickle juice or some some uh, chicken stock or some bone broth or some uh, yummy yummy sauerkraut or sauerkraut juice to make it a dirty a dirty um, intermittent fast or OMAD but I shouldn't really uh, do more than that and um, even if I'm suffering from some sort of uh, ketosis flu or some sort of diet flu I should just soldier through it and try to just maybe uh, drink a, uh, or, or, you know, swallow a pinch. Ooh, swallow a pinch of, uh, of salt or something like that. Pinch of kosher salt or maybe something to that effect. Anyway, I think that's it for now. Talk to you after the break and then I'll close it out. Hey there, Chris Cast here, Season 2, Episode 26. My name's Chris Abraham, and I'm sweltering under the sun here in sexy South Arlington while the kids play in the fountain. And I'm in Penrose Square, Penrose Square Park, which is at uh, the corner of Barton and Columbia Pike in sexy South Arlington. And um, I just want to tell you how you can contact me. My name's Chris Abraham. My WhatsApp, my uh, Signal, my uh, Telegram, and my texting is plus one two zero two three five two five zero five one. My email is chris at abraham.su. My Calendly is calendly.com slash chrisabraham slash 30. You can find all the information at uh, chrisabraham.com. Or Abraham.su. You can uh, also find me at social media at Chris Abraham on Twitter, 
at Chris Abraham on Instagram, slash in slash Chris Abraham on uh, LinkedIn, slash you slash Chris Abraham, Abraham on Reddit. Uh, you can find me at Christopher Abraham on TikTok. I don't know what my Snapchat is. I don't even use that. And um, I think that's it. If you want to find where my home uh, HQ is for this podcast, it's anchor.fm slash Chris Abraham. And you can find me anywhere. So please, and everywhere, even on YouTube now, thanks to uh, studioship.io, I am also on YouTube. So find me on YouTube or uh, reach out to me at any place on any of the podcast indexes, platforms, for Chris Cast, and please like, subscribe, and review me five stars, and I'll talk to you soon. I hope you're well. Merci beaucoup. A tout à l'heure. Au revoir. Hasta la próxima. Y ciao. Bye.